On the left side, these are issues that I've run into while setting up Xamarin UI tests. If you don't see your tests in the Test Explorer, test won't run, and that could be for a number of reasons. Uh, the APK file isn't found, or maybe you're getting some unpredictable app behavior because you're finding the wrong APK file and don't know it. Also, some device connection issues, whether you've got multiple devices connected or some simpler cases, no devices connected. And there's a very specific problem, unsupported major minor version that has to do with your build version number, and we'll look at those. So we're going to kind of go down the list of what we're going to check here, the uh, application that we're deploying its properties, where it ends up at, uh, and what um, device do we end up running the test against. So we'll look at all of those properties. We'll look at the NuGet packages for the solution, in particular for the test, because that can affect if you don't see the tests in the test explorer. Look at the environmental variables when those are read, the Visual Studio tools options that determine paths for the Android files, uh, ADB clients, and the more physical device connection and cabling. Okay, so we've got the very simple app that we had from before. It is deployed in both release and debug versions to two different devices. One is this Samsung. It's a physical device uh, cabled by USB cable to this machine, and the other is an emulator. It's a Visual Studio Android emulator here. This is actually running as an x86. The emulation is usually done in x86 when you can, and but we'll still need to push the uh, push the app out as an x86 binary. So let's look at that first. We've got the app here. This is the test, and let's take a look at the properties first of all. So we've got the application uh, on both devices. We have Android 6 running, um, so we can run, and I only have Android 6 loaded on here at the moment. We can leave the minimum Android target. Now the target Android version, we want to set to what we want to have pushed out to the device. Later on when you run this in the cloud, it doesn't matter, but here it does. The manifest... First of all, look at the package name. This is going to end up as a file app1.app1.apk. We'll also need to, you should have the internet capability enabled. doesn't matter which build you're in, it applies to both of them. Under the options, again, we need to have shared runtime off. And if you see an error that says no ABIs uh, are, are enabled, um, we're finding out that one of the there's no build for the architecture that we're running on. So if you're running on the emulator and you get that, that error, you need to come out to the Android Options Advanced and add in an x86 target. Notice in the output path, we've got bin release. We're on the release configuration. If we go to debug, it switches over. Uh, just be aware that if you put in your own path here, let's say d colon backslash apks, that that applies to the configuration that you're on. This affects where it gets deployed to and where the tests are run against. How it finds during the test, how it finds the APK is entirely this one liner. They suggest in the comments that you uncomment. Now, a lot of the comments for the Xamarin testing are really more apropos for a Xamarin Studio. Uh, so you'll need to make some syntax changes here. Uh, I'm going to set up a couple of device names here that we're going to need in a moment. Just put these up top. I'll explain why in a moment. We'll try them without, just so you can see the error. And then I'm going to drop in the APK file path bit of code here. So what this is saying is this from the perspective of the test application, if you go into bin, debug, or wherever this is put, it's going up three directories and then coming back down to the app, bin, debug, and then there's the ap1, app1.app1.apk. Doesn't matter which we've got this set to, debug or release, it's still going to go to this path and get the the APK file. If we've got multiple devices running, um, it won't know 
which to push this against and we'll get a, an error uh, that will say that we've got a couple of devices. It'll give us these names for them, device serial numbers. And uh, we'll, we'll add in a line of code that will handle that in a moment. Okay, so up here we don't see the uh, test run for app launches from our test. So the first thing that we need to do is there'll be a there'll be a suggestion actually in the UI that says uh, that you need to run all, or in our case, we can just build the UI test and it'll discover the test for us. Now this still may or may not be correct, but at least we're seeing it here in the list. If we don't and or this runs incorrectly, then next thing to check is going to be the NuGet packages. So we'll look at the manage NuGet packages for solution. And we've got three packages installed in unit. That's going to be the framework for the unit testing that the Xamarin UI tests are sitting on top of. UI test, the test should have the version of in unit 264. Very specifically, it'll also show in the documentation that you need to have that. If you don't, you may need to select it and uninstall it, then uh, reinstall it. There'll be a drop down list and you can pick the version that you want to work with. So 264. In unit test adapter is required in order to see things in the list. Uh, and this should be in the 2.0 versions, not the 3.0 versions. It also had a little explanation down here. You could also use the VSIX adapter. That would be going through tools, extensions, updates, and finding the in-unit test adapter 2.0 for that. And then it would apply to all the solutions. This is just applying to the one solution. I'm going to go ahead and stay with this. This last here is Ameren UI test. Um, is showing a lower version 138. That's fine. You can leave it here. You could upgrade it to uh, the uh, to the latest and greatest. Either way is fine. So main pieces are that for the UI test, you need NUnit 264, NUnit test adapter 2.0. That needs to be either here or from the tools extension to updates. It would apply to all. In both cases, the NUnit test adapter needs to be 2.0. So let's go ahead and try to run this and see what kinds of issues we run into. We'll peel them back one at a time. Okay, so we've got a fail there. Uh, so we found two connected Android devices. Either, either only have one connected or select using device serial. So this is actually fairly straightforward. Uh, this is telling us that I could either, for instance, shut down the emulator or unplug the physical device, but I need to choose either do that or choose one of these using device serial, which is a method off of the configure app. So we can say dot device serial and then give it one of the two paths or one of the two device serial numbers that it gave us. This looks like a, um, this first one here, it looks like an IP and a port, uh, but actually it's being used as a serial number. So you can just grab that all as a string or use this device serial number that's for the physical device. Let me go ahead and grab the physical device. And now we'll be running our test against this. Go ahead and rebuild the UI test. And run it. I've got an app called Visor on here, and so we can kind of Keep an eye on the device while it's running. Also be aware that just about everything under the sun that talks to one of these devices for Android is going over the Android debugger ADB. And so if you look at your task list, you may see one or more of those. It's important to keep those in mind in case um, things get into an unstable state. You may want to uh, shut down the ADB. And so that's finished running, it's failed. Let's take a look. Failed to execute. Okay, and that's looking like an issue with the emulator that's already running here. I'll shut that down. Let's try that again. In any case, there's a traffic jam at the ADB. 
and that's passing. So that was the issue. The, the emulator was already running and was contending even though we had this uh, device set up. So we've looked at the app properties, the NuGet packages. Um, another th issue that can happen are the environmental variables uh, can give us some issues. We're concerned about versioning of the Android SDKs and the Java SDKs. Those are controlled from two places, tools, options, Xamarin. We've got the Java Development Kit location, Android SDK location, and the native NDK files as well. On this machine, I've got all of these set up just one time, or in one place, I should say. So I'm working with 1.8, and so these, these pieces are compatible. When you run the test, there'll be a log file, and it will tell you where it's reading from. So it's finding, first of all, it looks at Android Home, and then it's looking in the registry. If I put in a garbage path here, for instance, in my environment variables, um, it'll show that it's not found, and it'll just move on to the registry. Eventually, it'll show you where it picked up. In this case, it's using the Android SDK location uh, from the registry. That becomes um, something that you look at when you've got this unsupported major minor version issue. If you look at your tools, the SDK manager, and you're looking at the build tools. If you use the uh, 1.7 version of the JDK and you are using later than the 23 version of the build tools, you'll get that major minor mismatch error. So there's two routes that you can go. You can either downgrade the these tools into the 23 to work with the 1.7 JDK, or you can uh, install the 1.8 JDK and then you can go with the latest and greatest. A couple of notes about uh, devices and cabling. Um, if you're getting no devices, that's pretty simple. It usually means that you're using just a data cable, I'm sorry, a power cable rather than a data cable, or that the, uh, the cable's no good, or you're plugged into a, a, a splitter of some sort and it's malfunctioning. So what you want to do is uh, get a known good cable and plug directly into the PC. Hope that was helpful, and thanks for watching.